this program is related to Microsoft Fabric. So, have anyone uh, have experience, prior experience on Azure? Um, or are you new to Azure? Did you, did you work on uh, data factory or Synapse in Azure? Yeah, I, I have worked on Azure Data Factory. Okay, thanks, Krishna. And others, are you new to Azure or you are having some prior experience? Yeah, we are new to Azure and uh, we have only knowledge in Power BI. Okay, thanks, Shinna. Let me start uh, what you are going to learn in this program. So, we will be learning something called Microsoft Fabric, which is a unified tool of all the components which is available in Azure for the ETL side. Okay, unified tool for ETL components in Azure. So, what all ETL components we have? First, let me tell you what is ETL. Extract, transform, and load. And load. So we have something called data factory. Synapse. And Databricks. These three tools are available on Azure site for uh, getting the data from different sources, uh, sources. Like you can get data from Oracle. <laughs> you can get, get data from SQL Server. You can get data from MySQL. So different sources. Or these are all structured uh, data. You can get it from their relational databases. You can get data from non-relational databases like Cosmos DB or MongoDB. Else, you can also get data from data like Gen2 storage account. So anywhere you can get data, or you can get it data from on-premise database as well. Okay, so there is no limitation from where you can get data in Azure. You can get data from anywhere, and you can do this extract, transform, and load. Um, of data you extract and get your data placed in data like gen2 and then you use the data and transform the data based on the user's requirement uh, a simple transformation might be a uh, user might ask like um, i have my data i have i have something in oracle and uh, some data in csv files you club them together club them together Club them together and provide me a single provide me a single source. So you can get data from anywhere. Okay, this is a single uh, simple transformation I'm just telling, and you can load it to data into data SQL database or uh, data warehouse or data like Gen2 again, and you can use several SQL pools for querying the data. So we have separate tools previously. Data Factory, Synapse, and Databricks. And we have something called Power BI also, which is used for data analytics. Power BI. Now, Microsoft brought a unified tool, which is Microsoft Fabric, which consists of all the above tools which I mentioned. This has Data Factory, this has Synapse. And instead of Azure Databricks, they mentioned data science. You can get data real-time analytics. And you have Power BI as well. So all this data, these tools are together clubbed. And we call it as single tool, which is Microsoft Fabric. This was introduced just three, four months back. And it is um, well in demand in the market. Because people, while instead of going to multiple sources, they can choose one fabric and they can develop their pipelines, they, they, they can uh, do their analysis, they can use the Power BI at the same place. It will auto generate reports, uh, reports here. We don't need to design the reports. It will, if we ask to auto generate a report, it will help us to auto generate a report. 
based on that you can download the report and you can regenerate or really develop the reports but this this tool is going to change entire analytics future And usually in cloud, we store data in data like Gen2. But in Microsoft Fabric, the data will be stored in something called one lake. We have something called one lake. Here the data will be stored. So what is the significance and what is the difference between the previous data like Gen2 and one lake here is in one lake, you can store for your entire organization, there will be only one lake. It might be different team. You might be from uh, um, uh, another project and someone might be from other project. Or for all of you, there will be only one one lake available for you. Entire organization will have only one one lake. So what is the advantage here is, in data like Cento, you used to get data into raw layer and then move the copy of data to archive layer after uh, moving the data to next layer. So you're copying multiple duplicate copies here. Instead of that here, we'll have only one copy of data and that is stored in something called Delta format. The data will be stored. So this is the advantage. You'll have uh, duplicates. You can avoid the duplicates there. I'll just show you the overview of this. Uh, please let me know if you're able to see my paint. A diagram of data, this thing. Are you able to see? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So here, if you observe, this is the architecture of um, um, Microsoft Fabric, overview of Microsoft Fabric. You have data factory inside it. You have data engineering, Synapse data engineering. You have a data warehouse. You have a data science. You have real-time analytics, which will be done with event hubs, all these things. This is the business intelligence tool, Power BI, and something called Activator. This is you are having, which is for scheduling. So you have all these things available, and you can available at single place. And there is one leg for storage for storing all the data which is coming from all these places. It will be stored in one leg. So there is no need to go to multiple places now. Okay. So this is a single place, and all your data can be stored in single place here. We might store different projects data in a single place. And let me open the portal once, how it looks like. I'll just show you the portal. app.fabric.microsoft.com is a link for the portal. I'm just signing because I have an account. During training, I'll help you to create an account for Microsoft Fabric. This is how the UI looks for Microsoft Fabric. You can have Power BI, you can have Data Factory, you can have all these things at a single place. If I wanted to create uh, something like a, a Data Factory using Data Factory pipeline, I can just select the Data Factory here and I can create my pipelines here. Just create a Data Pipeline. And you'll ask uh, what is a pipeline name? I'll just give you simply now. Yes, I have one doubt. So we are using data pipelines in a fabric. So we don't want to go with the data factory, right? No, if you, if your project is having something called data factory pipelines, then you can go it in, you can use it here. If your project is having something called data engineering stuff, you can go here and you can develop your things here. Based on your project, you can have it all the tools here available in a single place. So no need to learn the data factory outside. 
separate course. No. In this course only it is available or what? Yes, yes, yes. First, what we will teach is, as many of you are new to Azure, first we will go with data factory overview. and how the pipelines will look here in the data factory. And we will be working on hands-on on Synapse pipelines. This is similar to data factory, the pipelines and everything, but you have something called additional here. We have something called serverless SQL pools. Massive parallel processing. And dedicated SQL pools, which is massive parallel processing. And you have something called notebooks, which is having Apache package pools. Okay. That is Spark pools. So here you need to write Python code as well, right? In the notebook. You can write. You can write in the notebook if you wanted to go with the Python code. Else you can only design with pipelines and that will also help you to uh, finish your job. This is used for big data. Okay. This entire tool one is designed for from handling big, big data. One more this question is. from me. Yeah, actually in Synapse only uh, deal with the uh, RDBMS, any RDBMS data, right? No, is we can right go or? with any, anything, any data. Structured, semi-structured data. Semi-structured data. Is it possible in Synapse? Yes. Semi-structured data you can have with Synapse. Okay. And we'll go in, the, in this format, data factory overview, then Synapse pipelines. We'll have hands-on experience on ETL, how to bring data from multiple sources. We'll learn how to do ETL in Synapse. Then we have something called data flow concept in Synapse. We will learn that next, after that, your fabric starts. Your fabric training starts from here. This is entirely for a data engineer. We will be preparing you. Next, we'll go to the fabric because so the same tools are available in fabric. So we need to know how to use them in the fabric as well. Because you don't have data flow in fabric, you have something called data flow gen 2 in fabric. And you need to know how to use the lake house concepts in fabric. And we have something called data warehouse concepts. We should know what is the difference between them. When to use Lakehouse, when to use data warehouse. And we need to do mini project end to end, like how to break data, how to load the data, how to move the data from one place to another place, how the real time project works. These things will be done. So you will have two mini projects, one at the end of data factor and synapse pipelines. And the other at the end of the training of our data, data uh, fabric, Microsoft fabric. There will be two things available here. You will know something called medallion architecture. We will discuss about this. And you will also discuss on how to use notebooks for uh, Spark code execution. Okay. And you can also have the same notebooks in the Synapse as well. This is how the program continues. We'll be starting from the basics. From the scratch, we'll be starting. And we will go to the little advanced level in Synapse. Then you'll be de designing some dynamic pipelines for how your workload will be done in real-time projects. Once you're hands-on with all these concepts, then we'll go to the fabric, right? fabric training. And there we'll use this, all the tools to learn. Okay. Any doubts, please? Do you have any doubts? Uh, no.
So as I said, you can develop Power BI reports also here on the fabric. Let me show you one sample thing which is available in. You can create your own workspaces. This is similar to Power BI uh, workspace. Now, this is my general pipelines I have available here. So I wanted to generate a report on top of that. We have something called semantic model. The people from Power BI they know this is the data set, actual data set. You can say create or auto create a report. Just click on it. Okay. Let me go back and add that to Got stuck. It got stuck, guys. Just give me a minute. I'll refresh it. So I'm going to my workspace. This is my workspace. We'll go to my another workspace here. This is a SQL endpoint which is available here. So, I endpoint and the source and call. Uh, connection. How you wanted to connect to the thing that is yes, called a That's endpoint. what I'm asking here. This end endpoint means it is a source or it is going to be stored the data in the ending stage. That's what my question is. Okay, it's a uh, connection string. You can think it like a connection string. Connection string for connecting the source or uh, uh, storing the target. data? Target. Let's target. think. Yes, wherever you are storing the data, you call it as target, right? That is the one yeah. which you are. Yeah. Okay. So just I opened one of the query here. Now let me say this to add to semantic model. Now let's go and open auto create report. So it is generating a report for us automatically. Can view a report also once it is generated. So this is how the report generates automatically here. Whatever the available data. You can see some of trip distance by pickup time. Okay, you have uh, some of tip amount. You have some of total amount. You have something called fair amount. So this is how and it there is also some description it, it auto generated for us. You can download this report and you can redesign based on the inputs or you can change the report that is up to you. But this is how uh, the Microsoft fabric is going to change the analytics feature here. I have something called, uh, as I said, we have something called lake houses. Let's say create new. We go to the my workspace. Select a data factory. Data engineering. Let me show you the data engineering stuff here. We have something called lake house. You have something called spark job definition, pipelines, notebooks, everything it is has. So just click a lake house. It will create a new place similar to the storage account, data like Gen2. In data like Gen2, if you have some experience, we can only store something called files there. We cannot store tables there. But here in the lake house, 
you can store your tables you can store your files at the same place so data lake and something called data warehouse they just remove this end things and set a new word called lake house this is how they derived and here you are storing files here you are storing tables the data is stored in tables here you can store data in files you can store the data in tables so this is how the combination they brought which is called a lake house which is a new feature in fabric we'll be learning as part of the program so any doubts on the curriculum you have any doubts just this is an overview of the curriculum i wanted to give we'll be starting actual uh, demo class uh, again on monday or sometime when they were they decide the timings but just i wanted to give an overview for the people who are new to this technology what they will learn i just wanted to give and if you are completely new that is okay for us because we are going to start learning data engineering stuff from the scratch and we'll be helping you with interview questions we'll be helping you with resume preparation you will have too many projects and also whatever you learn here it is completely the real time experience which i had i will be sharing once this training is done you can claim 3 to 5 years of uh, data engineer experience as a real time any doubts please go on Krishna you are talking something um yeah i thought to ask you uh and any uh, spark uh, related that means uh, databricks related you will cover what, what are those stuff you want to know okay we don't cover much into databricks topics here because we are going with all the all the tools right so we will be mm-hmm. spend uh, we'll be spending time on each site because first we'll be learning synapse completely then you will be coming to fabric then you will be spending time how to design pipelines how to use each of the tool we'll be spending time there it's not oh. specifically focused on the databricks we have another program which is uh, started which is called uh, masters in azure data engineering where we are uh, helping there to learn synapse data factory databricks and we'll be covering spy spark python also there so that is a separate oh. program we have this is a separate program okay um, i'm basically an adf actually uh, so mm-hmm. uh, i want to understand uh, which can be useful i guess uh now almost uh, 70 plus percentage of projects were on synapse okay okay, okay. they are moving to synapse mm-hmm. so from the data factory they initially came with the data factory they brought an advanced tool called synapse within one one and a half year everyone transition to synapse because the advantage of synapse now they brought fabric now within one one and a half year the people will move to fabric okay uh, even uh, uh, suppose if there existing already databricks is there okay even uh, azure is also accommodating uh, AD, uh, azure databricks, databricks. yeah hmm. but uh, okay they for completed they bought the synapse also but uh, again uh, we can do whatever we can do in uh, databricks that we can do in uh, synapse also right yes but one but, major difference from simple major difference uh, from synapse to data fabric i'll explain okay you are about to ask right why they brought fabric again yeah yeah uh, yeah uh, so no, one, no. i mean to okay. i mean to ask you this databricks is there already mm. why synapse synapse both are okay uh, Uh, they can uh, uh, in synapse we can write the py spark and uh, and the you can develop the pipeline cs yes, yes in the yeah. databricks also we can do the same why brought why they brought synapse yeah yes yes right yes. yeah yes let me can you yeah synapse it is of microsoft tool databricks it's not microsoft it's a third party tool to microsoft right 
yes, the yes, third party tool to Microsoft. So in order to dominate Databricks, they tried with Synapse. Okay. But mm -hmm. people are preferring Databricks as it is there in the market already. So that's why they said, okay, we will integrate your tool. And they brought something called Azure Databricks mm -hmm. into the Microsoft. Similarly, AWS Databricks is there, Google Databricks is there. Yeah. Okay. Databricks itself is another company. These cloud vendors they brought into by integrating this tool. But they need to pay money to Databricks. It is not yes. free that they integrated. They, they are not charging. They will be paying money to Databricks. And they will be uh, the end user, whatever the client. He pays for the Databricks compute. Mm -hmm. If you are running a notebook, then he has to pay to Databricks compute that thing. But just if you are storing data, then you are going to pay to Azure. Okay. So the mm -hmm. money, yes. it is split into two sides now. Yes. So Correct. now... These vendors, they wanted to dominate Databricks. So that's why they brought something called Fabric now. Hmm. So what is the difference? Here also we have notebooks only. And here also hmm. you have notebooks only. In Synapse also you have notebooks. How do you think that people will use uh, the notebooks now in the Fabric? Because they did not use much in the Synapse side, right? Maybe hmm. people turn to Synapse. But this has Databricks has huge market when it has to go to the notebook side, Python or PySpark code side, okay? Now they brought Fabrics. What they did is, they are, uh, if you are aware, like something called a cluster, we will turn on when you are using notebooks. We need to spin up a cluster. Okay, so usually the spin up time will take some two to three minutes in notebooks yes. and in even Databricks, it also takes around uh, one to two minutes of time. Correct. Usually. But yeah. Fabric will enable you in 15 seconds. Same spin up. Okay. So this cluster time is reduced again. Whenever you want, you can spin up a cluster immediately. Mm. Less than 15 seconds, it is going to spin up. So users are saving time here. Mm. Instead of waiting for two minutes, they are going to mm. spin up the cluster within less than 15 seconds. 10 to 15 seconds, this cluster will on. Hmm. So this performance they need, this kind of performance user expects. So that is the game changer for Microsoft Fabric. That's why they wanted to dominate this one. And you know, AI everywhere it is integrated. So even yes. Databricks has integrated AI. So in a similar way, Fabric also integrated. So you have many tools which help you to write code. Hmm. Okay. So this will be the game changer for them. Any doubts, guys? Now, just to summarize one more thing. Uh, okay, which uh, Synapse you are explaining completely, end to end. Ah, yes, Synapse will be explaining, yes. Yeah, under Data uh, under data Factory? Data Factory, uh, it is similar. Only for developing pipelines, you need Data Factory. Nothing else okay, is there. Just for orchestration, right? you will explain that. Yeah, just I'll explain it. And we'll go to Synapse. We will show oh. you the difference between Synapse and Data Factory. The same pipeline design is available in Synapse. Okay. So nothing will be changed in the development of orchestration. Okay. And uh, one lake you mentioned actually. One lake yes. in the sense is ADLS Gen 2 only existing. Okay. Uh, like that. We have Maybe a concept it's... called ADLS Gen 2 in the previous. Now they yeah. removed that concept in Fabric and they mentioned something called one lake, which is okay. similar to like your OneDrive. Okay. Okay. All okay. your data will be stored there. Structured, unstructured, everything will be stored there. Okay. Including the lake house tables, everything. Okay. And uh, additionally, there is a delta tables concept you mentioned. Yes. And uh, even uh, Databricks having live tables, there are those features also uh, added here? I don't know. Uh, no, not it. Not it. Oh. It is going to, they, they are going to add. There are changes coming in. But this is okay. uh, not a fully mature tool. But once it is come to live, no, people will mm -hmm. start saying in the job openings like we need fabric. Okay. Okay. Engineers. That is how they will go. Okay. So it's already there in market now. Four to five months it is there. It is still being releasing new features every 15 days, every one month. There, the new features are going to add. Mm -hmm. So, but before that, you need to know the whatever the basic stuff you have done in the Synapse or Data Factory. If your project shifts to fabric, you need to 
create the pipelines here right you need to know yes. how to move the data you need to how to connect the data you need to mm. how to know transform the data mm. because in data flow uh, in fabric we don't have something called data flow we have something called data flow gen 2 okay data okay. flow gen 2 that is the second version of data flow okay. here you will be using mostly the power bi stuff to do the okay. transformations okay and uh, any database that means azure sql also uh, we can use that yeah, we'll okay. be covering yes sir uh, and uh, in uh, in adf we are not much using the data flows but uh, we are using the okay any other uh, database something like uh, azure sql or uh, snowflake we are using so instead of the uh, using the data flows here also we can use the data flows gen2 right yes yes you can use instead of data uh, instead of data flows gen2 we can use other okay sql co sql uh, stored processors or uh, you can use you can use okay so, okay yeah, okay just uh, wh- how much the duration of this course uh, this course will be uh, like roughly it will be around 30 to 35 classes it will take okay to complete yeah let's say let's take off 35 classes okay So yeah. one and a half month or uh, near yeah, to uh, two months, the course duration will be like thirty-five working days. Let's come in that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it, guys. Just I wanted to show you this architecture and uh, what we'll be uh, learning today. We'll be having uh, the regular classes from the next uh, demo onwards. Okay. And you are uh, you mentioned that other curriculum also there on data bricks and some uh, ADF those yeah. things right yes. Python yeah and you we'll, uh, you are um, the, you are the same yes, trainer I am the trainer there also okay yeah fine and I'm really sorry guys I just really joined little late because of the power cut and. I was on mute and I was asking question. I I I asked each of your names. Guna Karu, they am talking until Chinna raised that I'm not. Uh, I'm I'm in mute. I'm I don't know that. Okay, I'm really sorry for that. Okay. It's okay, sir. It's okay. If you don't have. Yeah. If you don't have any doubts, we'll see in the next demo, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. How many days are uh, going to be like this, uh, like demo? Uh, so three classes, sir. Two classes. Yeah. I mean. From next class onwards, we'll be starting actual architecture. It will be continuation. There will not be like a demo kind of thing. Yeah. It previously, com- I have joined, uh, and the company has stopped the uh, training. The uh, previously. Oh, uh, I don't know about that. Uh, because I am continuing a fabric. We are having a fabric uh, session which is going on, and it will be completing by this week. By this Thursday, we are going to complete first batch of fabric. Okay. Okay. From so, are you going to giving the videos as well, right? Material. Yeah, yeah. You will get recordings and everything. You will get recordings yeah. and everything. And actually, um, in ADF, I don't have any knowledge, and uh, I'm a Power BI master. We will okay, be completely with... doing from scratch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, please help me and how to create the account, how to continue the. Definitely, account. definitely. So we need definitely. to practice it, right? Attending yes, the it. class is very uh, easy, but uh, doing the practice uh, same day is a tough mm. job. Yeah, 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 because of that one, you need to provide the account also. Mm. <laughs> you are doing very to well, but uh, we need to do it right. Uh, yes, in our yes. So I am asking you, please help me on the account side. All the features Definitely. need to work. Yeah, yeah, we'll help you to create account. Okay. It's just a one month trial kind of thing only. Uh, sorry. Uh, usually we get sixty days of trial for fabric. Oh, sixty days, sir. Okay. Hmm. After that, how much we need to uh, give a pro a pro license? Uh, if you wanted to upgrade, then you need to pay per day like this. Uh, whenever you use, you have to pay that. I'll give you the charge. Day wise or monthly wise? Uh, Day wise or monthly? It will be actually calculating per hour wise. Okay, what you basis. do, it will be cal- yeah hourly basis. It will be calculating, and it will give you at the end of month. You will they will you will get a bill, but hourly basis it will be going to charge. Okay. Okay, but sixty days trial. Once it is done, I I'll, I'll show you how to create another free trial also. Okay. Is it for credit card details also like that? 
Yes, yeah, we need, uh, yes, we need that. Okay. We need that. I'll help you with that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.